Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. My name is Drake. Now, we've had a lot of news in crypto the past day or two days. Um, so we are going to get into all of that. It's going to be a, a fairly big one, a lot of stuff to unpack. So strap in, guys. But before we do that, guys, we've had a, quite a few people join us in the last um, like 24 hours. So if you're new here, first of all, welcome. And second of all, I just wanted to say like for everybody, for anyone watching any of my videos, I am completely honored that you guys would take the time out of your day and lend me your ear. So. Thank you. It's very much appreciated. And I am honored to to have you guys watching any of my videos. So thank you. Now, before we get into the news, guys, as always, we are supporting Emory Farm Sanctuary. So if you have not already, please go over and help these guys out. Every month I spotlight a different animal sanctuary, a small anim animal sanctuary. So it really takes not very much money. Uh, you know, even just a few dollars over to these guys really helps them out. You can see their PayPal at the bottom of this flyer, but I they also have Cash App and Venmo. So, and all of that information is in the description of the video. We also are doing the raffle this month for these guys. And right here, you can see this is actually a portrait of my dog, Zeno. You can see up the, the portrait up there in the, the corner of that. Uh, but I paid Emory Farm and they are doing, they did this uh, photo or this uh, portrait of Zeno for me over the last week or so. And you can just kind of see, I just wanted to show you guys the progression of this, this art that she has done for me. And this is the final product, guys. I mean, <laughs> absolutely awesome. I mean, compared to this, this photo that I sent her to do this off of, it is just, I mean, I am, I am tickled with, with this work. So I'm super excited guys. The raffle is for one of these uh, portraits. So if you win the raffle, you'll be able to send in a picture of your pet and she will do a portrait like this of your pet. So the de details on that raffle are every $5 that you donate directly to Emory Farm, again, either through their PayPal, their Venmo, or their Cash App. All you have to do is donate $5 and you get an entry into that raffle for every $5 that you donate. Now, where I'm doing this raffle kind of independently, the only way I know to, to put your name into that raffle bucket is if you send me a picture of your donation. So up here, you can see my X and threads and Instagram handle is at Drake P 269. You can shoot me a, a message over on any of those platforms, include a picture of your donation, and I'll make sure to get you into that raffle. If you can't seem to find me or or get me that way, leave me a comment in the comments of these videos of any of my videos and and we'll figure something out for you to get get that over to me. Uh, but please, guys, go over and help these animals out. I'm not affiliated with these guys in any way. It's just something that is important to me, and I appreciate any of you guys that will will go over and help these animals out. So thank you. Um, all of their information again is in the description of my videos. So make sure you go over there and help them out. Now we've got a bunch of news. Like I said, we've got good news and we've got bad news. So we're going to actually start out with the bad news, not giving you a choice. <laughs> so here's the FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is out there in the markets in the last few days. The first one kind of goes back to my previous video, not my Solana video, but the one uh, before I was talking about the SEC 
the issuing a Wells notice saying that they are going to sue MetaMask. And I mean, that is alarming. And, and it definitely is fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the markets. Because if, if the SEC and the government are going after your self-custody wallets, it's not good. Uh, it's uh, pretty alarming. The good, the good part of that news, however, is that MetaMask is proactively going, and, and there's a few other companies that are actually going after the SEC. They've filed a suit and are suing the SEC for abuse of power. So that is good. At least, you know, these companies are not just rolling over and giving up the fight and paying a fine, whatever. They're actually standing up for themselves. They're standing up for you and me and our, our right to self-sovereignty. So that is positive, but it is uh, some fear. The whole the whole idea is definitely some fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market. And that delicate butterfly that trades, you know, that money that trades on the market is definitely fluttering around the last few days. So uh, the second thing is we're going to go over here to uh, this, this article from Coindesk. And this was news that broke yesterday. It says Samurai Wallet founders arrested ch and charged with money laundering. Now, Samurai, the reason they were arrested uh, is that Samurai offered a mixing service. So they would take your Bitcoin and everybody else's Bitcoin, all of their customers' Bitcoin, and kind of mix it around. And basically, it's a privacy thing. It's uh, meant to kind of disguise whose Bitcoin is whose. And the government does not like that because they can't tell whose money is whose, just the same. And so you can see right here, guys, this is they were charged with money laundering. Now, this isn't anything new on the part of our government. Like, obviously, they hate this kind of stuff. And when, when on the surface, they make it about money laundering. Now, my opinion on this is it's a privacy issue. And I'm sorry to say it, like, Nobody wants mo money laundering going on, right? It's not good for our society. It's not good for the everyday person. However, if you can't do your job and, and thwart money laundering without encroaching on everyone's privacy, then in my opinion, you have no right in that space. So do your job, government. That's my message. Do your job without encroaching on all of our rights. But again, guys, this is no, no different than things have ever been in the U.S. I mean, especially since 9-11, uh, the government has taken a very total totalitarian approach to surveillance of all of us, of all of our citizens. In fact, lately, uh, just I think it was last week, uh, Biden and the White House uh, renewed FISA, which is a spying act um, and survey a thing where they can surveil all of us. So nothing new here, but it is again, guys, when it when it has anything to do with um, cryptocurrency, it is fear uncertainty and doubt. So that's another reason the market is doing weird things lately. Now we're going to jump over to the, so <laughs> there's a joke kind of going around cryptocurrency. And this was the DOJ, the Department of Justice. We've got all the three letter agencies coming out against crypto the last few days. So we've got the FBI issuing a warning against crypto money transmitter transmitters. And in this article, it says they appear to be aimed at mixers. So this is probably 
a response to the samurai wallet thing where they were mixing coins and and helping people you know and their privacy but if you go down and you read this public service announcement from the FBI there it's it's pretty vague and the terminology in here could be construed to include self uh self sovereignty wallets you know you know off exchange wallets so again this is just more fud if the government goes after um self custody wallet guys wallets you know metamask phantom your tangem wallet your engrave all of these um self custody wallets if they go after your self custody i th i think they have another thing coming guys that is going to be a fight and they are not going to to win that that fight easily in my opinion so i don't know just some fud out there again now we're going to go over to another thing this actually happened recently um but this is an ongoing thing uh back in november or december i believe um we saw that the doj arrested or or extradited um cz and he he willingly you know uh surrendered and he came to the us and he stepped down first of all from binance he's the head he was the head of Binance. So he stepped down as part of their agreement. He paid $4.3 billion, which is the biggest settlement of its kind in history. And they also said settled on terms where CZ would do no more than 18 months of jail time in this agreement that they had back in December or whenever. Uh, and now, guys, I'm not a big fan of CZ, to be honest. Uh, but as you can see here, this, this, uh, this article says US seeks three year prison sentence. So that's double what they agreed to back in December. And this, this uh, Bloomberg article doesn't cover it, but they're also asking for more, more money. They want millions of dollars more from, from CZ, uh, even though <laughs> he paid an outstanding thing. Now, guys, CZ admittedly wasn't fully above water on legal things. I think if he was, they would have fought this and, you know, the proof is in that he he just kind of settled with them. So he was definitely up to some things. However, this whole thing where the U.S. is going for more than what they asked for initially is just some backstabbing. You know, it just goes back to our government really just kind of having it out for crypto, crypto, the the entire crypto industry. And that is you know, alarming. It is causing more fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market again. So I don't know. You can never trust the government, it seems. You know, even when they sign a a, a thing with you, they're they're likely to do an about face and try and screw you over any way they can, apparently. Now the next thing we're gonna get into, um well, before we get into this, guys, we, you know, with all of this that we see going on with the government attacking crypto companies and crypto as a whole, it, it's been called enforcement or, or regulation by enforcement. You know, they, they haven't come out and made clear regulation on anything regarding crypto. So there's no real good rules for anyone to follow out there. And so we have people just trying to do their best, companies trying to do their best, and now the government's coming after them and they're 
they're regulating by enforcement. They're going after people, they're suing people, even though there aren't clear rules on the books. And what this is doing is it's forcing crypto companies and crypto individuals, people like me and you, out of the country. People are leaving, you know, companies are leaving the country to be somewhere a little more, at least a little more clear on what the government wants with their company. So it's not good for the US. They're just forcing good innovation and good companies overseas. And to be honest, they're doing the same with individuals. And if I'm, if I'm totally honest, I've been looking to, to leave the US for, I mean, honestly, at least 15 years. And I am finally at the point where I can do that. And so I am actually planning on moving out of the US within the next few years. Now, this isn't totally because of crypto, uh, but it is one reason. Um, you know, e everything here is just so discouraging with this country. Our healthcare is a complete mess. Uh, education is a dumpster fire here. Um, our foreign policy is <laughs> the most totalitarian thing out there. And so all of these things combined, uh, guys, I'm, I've actually been looking at several countries and there are a bunch that are on my list that as soon as I actually have some family stuff that will be um, kind of resolving in the next few years. But after that happens, I will be going, I'll be touring all of these countries on my list. And I am going to be looking to get out of this, this country, to be honest. And I know that probably uh, is disappointing for some people, you know, some people think America is the greatest place on earth, but I don't know with their approach to crypto, with their approach to a lot of things, it's just not for me anymore. So just goes to show you guys that, that a lot of the government's actions on all of this are, is forcing people out of the country. Now, I did want to jump over to this. This is neither good nor bad. Uh, let's see, scroll up here. GDP numbers came in yesterday and we saw the US economy grows at 1.6% annual pace. This, it says, fell short of estimates while inflation increases. So 1.6% is actually less than half of what was projected. The, people were expecting the GDP to come in around 3.4%. So it came on in far, far less than what people were expecting. Now, why this is important is because this really shows that our economy is not as strong as most people are thinking. Most people have kind of seen the economy lately as being pretty resilient. And, and the Fed, the Federal Reserve, has stated that. They've said, you know, we see that the economy is more resilient than we thought. And so things are good, you know, but this shows some weakness in our economy. Now, another thing, reason why this is important is because inflation is increasing. So I've been saying for a while, guys, that, that Jer uh, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, they are in a, a sticky spot, a really tough, you know, walk in a, tight, a, a high wire, uh, a, a, you know, because they're stuck between now, especially more than ever. We're showing that the economy is not great, which means in a Keynesian ex economic model like ours, the only way to really stimulate the economy is to loosen policy, loosen monetary policy and print more money. That stimulates the economy. That helps, you know, the economy not crash, right? But if you do that, 
you do so at the peril of inflation. So they're trying to control inflation without killing the economy. And now they're in a spot where the economy is not doing well. Inflation is going up. So what are they going to do? Are they going to take priority over inflation and keep rates higher for longer? Or do they ease to try and help stimulate the economy? Either way, you know, inflation is bad. And people are going to look to get out of inflative, the inflative fiat dollar into something else. Gold, Bitcoin is obviously the fastest horse there. So people are going to run to, to these other assets. And it just doesn't look good for our economy, honestly, guys. So there's fear, uncertainty, and doubt there too. Now, let's get into the good things. The hope. <laughs> First off, Hong Kong is set to debut their uh, debut their Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs on the 30th. So last day of this month, these ETFs in Hong Kong will go live, opening up a whole new market for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and probably stimulate um, the entire crypto. Um, economy all the same. So this is good news, guys. This just came out uh, yesterday or the day before. So these guys are planning to, to go live on the 30th. The next thing is BNY Mellon reports exposure to BT, uh, Bitcoin ETFs. Now, Bitcoin or BNY Mellon is um, the U.S.'s oldest bank and they are the world's largest custodian bank. So this is noteworthy worthy guys that we're seeing huge banks adopting Bitcoin. Now there is a little bit of suspicion there, like what are you doing with our Bitcoin? But ultimately I think this is just an adoption thing. Banks are starting to pivot and see that without embracing this new technology, they will be uh, irrelevant. So in my opinion, this is just good, good news. This is, um, you know, adoption, adoption of Bitcoin and, and crypto happening. So there's that. There's also this that came out, the IMF, the inter, uh, what, International Monetary, Monetary Fund, uh, yeah, International Monetary Fund says Bitcoin could reshape global finance. So they've come out. The IMF is a big, big organization. And again, guys, this, this brings up suspicions like, what are you doing with our Bitcoin? But they've come out pretty favorable towards Bitcoin, which is actually kind of surprising because they've warned the IMF came out hard against El Salvador for making uh, Bitcoin legal tender there in their, in their country. And so for them to kind of do an about face and say, you know, we see that this is actually probably very necessary. Bitcoin is necessary for global finance is surprising. Now, I want to scroll down here and just read you a few excerpts out of this article. First, it says, Bitcoin has long been viewed a potential diversification measure for many investors. The ongoing geopolitical geopolit struggles have made assets like Bitcoin and gold increasingly relevant. Subsequently, the IMF has noted how these qualities make it all the more important for emerging global economies. The second part says, overall, the ascension that Bitcoin has enjoyed through 2024 has proven to be massively important. Countries like El Salvador have shown how that success could be levied into greater economic performance for struggling nations. It will be interesting to see what countries follow suit throughout this year. 
So good news there, guys. We see nations that are actually deciding to be self-sovereign themselves and, you know, take care of their finances a little more responsibly than this Keynesian economic structure that we have here in the U.S. for sure. So good news there. More and more adoption. Now this one is big. This is going to bring a lot of adoption, guys. And this is uh, Stripe brings back crypto payments by a USDC stablecoin. So Stripe is starting up crypto payments again. Now, granted, they're not taking uh, Bitcoin, but this is crypto. And stable coins, guys, in, my, in one of my previous videos just recently, I kind of showed how stable coins make the entirety of the crypto market more robust and uh, just more functional. So this is going to bring more adoption into crypto. This is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I, I actually watched a bit of this. Um, actually this, maybe we'll just watch this really quick, okay. guys. That's not going to, the sound is not on there, guys. So anyways, I watched this video. If you guys want to watch this video, I will leave this link in the description. But in this video, uh, he, he kind of goes through a transaction of, of uh, this Stripe network using cryptocurrency. And the big thing there was that, um, let me get to this, that the system, it literally took under a second to, to post. Now, that doesn't make a lot of difference to consumers because we just use our cards. We pay for our groceries with our credit or debit card, and it really doesn't affect us. Yes, we get into our bank account and we see those pending transactions for days, So, but it doesn't really affect us on this side of of that transaction. Who it does affect is these companies that are accepting payments like Walmart, Target, anywhere you are paying with a card, they don't get that money, actually have possession of that money for days at a time. So instantly settled transactions like this are going to be huge for these big companies. Now, I want to show you guys who all these companies that use Stripe. Stripe is actually second only to PayPal as far as payments. But look at all the companies that use this, guys. We've got Amazon, um, AliExpress, Apple, Etsy, Walmart, Target, Wayfair, ASOS, uh, Samsung, eBay UK. Uh, more and more, I mean, all the way down, Wish, I think um, Lyft is on there. But big, big companies accept this. So when they start seeing, oh, I'm not even showing you guys this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, we've got, you know, all, all of these, Amazon, Walmart, all of these companies that, that accept and use Stripe as a payment system. Um, so when, when we have these big companies starting to see the value in crypto payments like this, they are going to incentivize people to use crypto because now they can get their money faster. And on top of it, you know, this isn't, this isn't completely the ideal form of crypto usage because Stripe is still a company. It's still a middleman in the process that is taking a fee. However, Stripe is only taking a 1% fee. So compared to Visa and MasterCard that are taking 3.5%, like three and a half times more than Stripe, this is going to, this is going to be big for those big uh, companies that are using Stripe and they will incentivize their customers to use crypto 
which brings more and more adoption into the space, guys. This is going to be bigger than I think most people think. And on top of that, this is a big thing for those of us that are in crypto already, because now we can start using, you know, say we we cash out a hundred dollars worth of our Bitcoin, we can now use that at the grocery store. And so payments using crypto as, as a payment method, this is a big, big step forward for, for that use case. So the last few days have been big. We've had a lot of big news and we have fear, uncertainty and doubt. We've got FUD to the maximum, but we also have really positive news and the potential for FOMO, fear of missing out. So we have fear to the upside with FOMO and we have fear to the downside with fear, uncertainty and doubt. Uh, what I'm saying is guys, leave fear out of it completely. Check your emotions at the door when you're dealing with crypto. Um, you know, the last thing you want to do is get shaken out of your position in crypto because of just some noise, right? Some fear, uncertainty, and doubt news that just really, it doesn't change the fundamentals of Bitcoin. And so really at this point, all of this is just noise. So check your emotions. I always encourage people to have a plan. Now, whether that be, um, you know, the four year plan, I, I talk about the four year thing a lot because in Bitcoin's history, there is not a four year period. You can pick any day in Bitcoin's history, take that four year period, and no one has ever lost money that way. And in fact, they're not even close to the same. You're very much better off any single four year period that you pick. You're much better off if you've held for four years, even if you bought at the very top of a cycle. So the four year period uh, thing is a very good plan, in my opinion. Um, you know, you can do dollar cost averaging. Dollar, dollar cost averaging is another plan. And what dollar cost averaging is, is every paycheck that you get, you're putting five, ten percent of your paycheck into Bitcoin or crypto or whatever. And the reason why that one is so good is because you it, it helps you manage those emotions very, very well, because it doesn't matter if we dip. Or if we go up, if we dip, you have money that's coming in from that next paycheck and you look at it as a good chance to buy. If we go up your investments that you already have, you're happy with. So dollar cost averaging, guys, as long as you stick with it, stick with that plan, it will help you um, manage your emotions. So that's a good plan. Those aren't the only plans, obviously, guys. but I do encourage you, if you're going to be in crypto, have a plan and stick to it because otherwise news like all of this is going to come out. You're either going to get shaken out or you're going to FOMO in. And when you FOMO in, most oftentimes that is when the, the, the market kind of turns and then you, you get FOMO'd out. You know, you buy the top of, of any localized peak and then Two, two days later, you're butted out of your position and you end up losing money that way, guys. So leave your emotions out, have a plan. And another thing that is will always help you is to research. Do your research. Find out what Bitcoin really is. And I hope that my channel helps you with that. Uh, but by no means do I recommend that all you do is watch me like you should be getting out you should be researching what bitcoin is all the good fundamental qualities of bitcoin and really find out you know all the good use cases for bitcoin because it is the future of money it it affords us self sovereignty it is an inflation against or a hedge against inflation all of these things you should know First principles wise, like this should be something that you just know. 
And the more you know about Bitcoin, the more you understand it, the more you're going to have, the more conviction you are going to have in Bitcoin and the less likely you're going to be able to uh, let your emotions get to you and, and lose your position or, you know, lose your conviction. So all of that, guys, highly recommend it. Those are my tips for you as an investor, as, an, as a holder, as a user of cryptocurrency. Again, guys, thank you so much. If you've made it this far to the video, thank you so much. Thank you to all the new subscribers to the channel. And, you know, I am just completely honored with all, anybody, all of you guys that watch my videos and watch my videos to the end like this. Thank you. Thank you sincerely. And as always, guys, please remember to go over and help the animals at Emory Farm Sanctuary. I will see you in the next video. Bye.